Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Destroy Yesterday here, always with your host. Today it's going to be part four in my Tricks for Beginners series. Um, it's going to focus on space and everything in space. So I'm already in the space station. We're going to check out the left side here when we fly in to let you know the new base teleportation system. It changed a little bit. So, not only can you teleport from a space station to your base, you can teleport to the other stations from which you teleported from in your base. So, it's the last three stations that you've been to where you teleported from them to your base. You can now teleport to them also from any, um, any space station plus your base. So that's pretty cool. So that way you don't have to actually travel to your base to then teleport somewhere else. You can just go to the space station if you're already in space. So that's cool. <clears throat> um, in space is the mission objectives that you can go get to. They range, they're different per uh, life form. Click on this guy on the left here, browse missions, and you can pick the one you want. And you will get the reward that it lists in the bottom here. Um, pretty cool. <clears throat> Um, and you simply can select that via the pause menu and log and select that mission. Um, <clears throat> on the other side, many of you already know this if you are um, not new to the game, um, but simply for real beginners, we're going to go over here and look. On the other side is a galactic trade network as well as other aliens you can talk to, as well as a place that you can buy blueprints. Now they are different for each life form. This one is Corvax, who sell um, suit enhancements. So there they are. You can rotate with them. L1 and R1. Gex sell ship blueprints, and Viking shell multi sell multi tool blueprints. So just very simple right there for you. All right, now let's go into space. A few things here that uh, I can show you. Um, <clears throat> one of the first ones is occasionally when you're playing you will see this little purple circle it's called the space anomaly now we're going to fly to it just so you can see what it looks like um, it's important that you go to this when you see it um, so we'll just pause so that's what it looks like just a little bit a ball um, sphere there is an entrance right there. You see it right in the middle there. Um, this um, space anomaly allows you to talk to two people. One is called Nada and one is called Polo. Both of which have the ability to give you new blueprints if you do the thing that they ask for. Um, Polo, for instance, the Gek in there, um, will ask you, have you scanned a certain amount of fauna? Have you uh, lived a certain amount of souls for extreme conditions? Um, have you made a certain amount of money? When you do those things that he says, he will give you a new blueprint. Some of those include the warp reactors and version 2 and 3 atlas passes. <clears throat> so, um, that is. A, make sure you pay attention to that and go in there as soon as you can. Um, okay. After that, obviously, when you get to a new system and you warp to it, you will not know what is on the planet until you uh, scan it with L3. It's a new thing. Um, as well as you won't know the name of uh, the planet until you scan it as well. The ship scanner um, reloads itself a lot quicker than the multi-tool scanner. So, makes it a lot easier. Um, you can, if you hold L1 or R1, you can barrel roll to the right or to the left. Makes it easier if you want to straighten yourself out. <coughs> um, if you get there and you can't see any of the planets, sometimes photo mode can help you. You zoom out here and look around. Can help. Um, not all the time, because sometimes I might be hidden um, behind a planet, but uh, they can help you with that. <coughs> Um, you'll notice too, when you scan a planet, it will tell you what is on the planet. For instance, cactus flesh. You can kind of tell what type of weather it's going to be based upon what is on the planet. So cactus flesh is most likely either going to be super dry or super hot. Um, so, 
Same with uh, you over here. I don't think there's anything on this one actually. Yeah, this one's empty. But uh, you get the idea. If there's frostwood on it, it's going to be cold. Makes sense. <clears throat> um, you fly faster in space. Now, what I mean by that is if you are on a planet and you have a waypoint that is on the other side of the planet, fly out into space and then use L1 and R1 to get to it. Um, as it will be a lot faster to do so than just flying on the planet itself. Um, not to mention the circle is quicker in space than it is on the planet as well. Obviously because gravity is not working against you. <clears throat> um, you can summon your freighter in space by simply clicking the down D-pad as usual and placing it like so, like that. So I can put it right there. So if you don't want to have to land on a planet to summon it, you can do it in space. Um, now let's go to the galaxy map. There's a couple new things in here. So I'm there. You can now, when you click on a system, it will show you how many planets and what they look like as they revolve around the sun. The sun being the, um, taking the place of that star system in the middle um, and clicking on it. So circles to get out of it, X is to view it. You will see that some of these have uh, circles around them. All that. That means you have been to that system already. A little white circle around it. <clears throat> um, there is a new thing called a filter. If you look here at the top now, um, you can change it to life form, conflict, economy, or just none. So no filter will give you the normal colors of the systems. You know, if you remember from the beginning, yellow, um, red, green, and blue. Um, change it to life form. You can look here and see that the certain colors will mean for the life form. So if we look here, yellow means Gek, super simple. Red means Viking. And this uh, clearish bluish is Corvax. So pretty cool. <clears throat> um, next, this one is new, very new. If you go to, um, so there's conflict as well. So green means you're good, yellow is uh, uh, mediocre, and red is bad. Obviously, just like a, a stop sign. Um, so, fairly simple enough. Or not a stop sign, a stop light, excuse me. Um, next is the economy. So this is a brand new one. I'm gonna tell you what all of these colors mean. I have a list here that I have figured out and created. Um, red means power generation. So, which means they sell fuel and isotopes high. <clears throat> Cyan, this color, means uh, nano construction sell high. Um, and as well, I must mention, I am going to put this list in the descriptions, in the description box. So, if you kind of forget all this, you can just simply look in the description box. Orange means mining industry. So ores can be um, purchased cheaply, but they do sell low. Yellow means manufacturing industry, or they sell raw materials and ore really high. Green is trading and shipping. So trading goods and commodities sell high. Blue, where's the blue one? That's the blue one. Um, is science and research oriented. Um, so those will sell high. And lastly, purple. These are ore and mineral processing. <clears throat> and uh, those will sell high. So if you're looking for a specific thing, all you need to do is change the filter to the color and it will give it there on the economy there and it'll, help, it'll tell you. So pretty cool. Um, the system is really uh, the Galaxy map now is really intuitive. It's really cool. If you look here at the top right, you'll see it says the big circle up there. It says Galactic Core. Um, you are the little um, yellow circle to the right. It kind of tells you how far away you are from the core. So you can kind of gauge how close you are just by looking at where you the yellow circle is with the white line there to the center. So pretty cool. <clears throat> um, you can also push L3. 
scan for discoveries. Um, eventually, those will tell you where you've been. I've already done it, but when you do that, it will be the yellow or the uh, white circle around the things that I told you about. So, simply to exit, you just push options for PlayStation 4. Oh, and you can push square instead of custom waypoint too, if you don't have enough uh, light years and warp cells to get to it. <clears throat> Okay. Next. Um, if you're being raided by pirates, you can push the down D-pad within five seconds of them scanning you to talk to them and bargain with them. Sometimes they will bargain, sometimes they will just shoot you. Um, so be aware of that. Um, you now have the ability to uh, find ships with the left and right D-pads here. It'll tell you what ship is flying currently. So, just in case you're curious. <clears throat> um, next, I would recommend that you highly land on planets with water, no matter what, as those contain usually very good resources. So, if I can find my planet, my home planet here. Okay, so it's around this planet, you can't see it, but let's... Uh, Let's engage the pulse drive here, and I'll show you. Usually you can tell if there's water on the planet just by simply looking at it from space. It's usually fairly easy. Um, as there, the texture of it is very different from other planets, as you'll see here. See? So, that has water on it, you can tell, because it's flat and it's blue. Unlike, where did it go, the cold one. I don't know if you saw it previously, but it was blue and things, but it looked bumpy. So. That's how you can tell if there's water on it pretty easy. So I got lucky and found a freaking awesome planet right there. Works out great. Um, I recommend that if your scanner finds buildings, abandoned or manufacturing, that you go to those planets. Uh, um, those buildings is um, always, as they will always give you something new, whether it's a blueprint, blueprint nanites, or units. <clears throat> um, Remember what system controls, or what uh, life form controls what system. If you want to buy new blueprints, um, the Gek will sell you the ship ones, as I clearly mentioned. The Viking will sell multi tool, and the Corvax sell the exosuit. Um, when you are in a space combat, as you remember here, we scan, uh, you'll see that little circle there. If you highlight over that on an enemy, it will lock on for a time being as long as you stay within the general area and it will always hit the ship when you're shooting them as long as you hit that that little circle so be aware of that um, make sure as you're flying that you always have iron with you or zinc or titanium this is used to charge your shield um, for pirates um, occasionally you might do a mission that has the defensive chip this is what you can use to summon the authorities to help you fight the pirates. Um, which can come in really handy if there's a lot. Um, a lot of people I've noticed too have been asking where you can find the conflict scanner and the economy scanner. Those are only found in GEC systems at the space stations. All right, You can only get those by buying them with nanites. They are a hundred nanites each. So pretty simple, but they uh, they come in really handy, so I recommend I recommend that you get those. Um, other than that, that's about it. Oh, actually, one last thing: ship type spawns. So, you are more likely to get a class S or A ship if you go to um, green or blue systems. Right now, I'm in yellow. So, if you're looking for one of those ships and you just sit in the space station, you're not going to find a class S very frequently. Um, even in your freighter, if you have a freighter and you go sit in one of those systems, it's a higher chance for you to find those ships in a better system. So, the spawn types for yellow are usually D and C. Ships red are C and B. Green are B and A. And blue are A and S. Now, you can throw in any type in any system randomly, but it's, very, it's rare. Um, so, if you want to find a specific ship, go to a higher rated um, system in order to find it. 
Um, so that's about it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you out, guys. Take care.